In this video, you will learn about the congenital limb deformity, commonly known as clubfoot. A clubfoot deformity, otherwise known as Talipes equinovarus, can either be postural or fixed. Postural clubfoot is due to positioning of the fetus in the womb. Fixed clubfoot can be flexible or rigid. We will be focusing on fixed congenital clubfoot. With regards to epidemiology, according to local statistics, Clubfoot is present in just less than 2 per 1,000 births in the black South African population. Clubfoot shows a male to female predominance of 2 to 1, and up to 50% of clubfoot is bilateral involving both limbs. The etiology of clubfoot is not known, therefore most cases are considered idiopathic. Associations include environmental risk factors such as smoking, drug use and teratogens, oligohydramnios, and genetic factors such as family history or other genetic syndromes. Clubfoot deformity is caused by muscle contractures, atrophy and thickening of tendon sheaths, especially tibialis posterior, the perineal tendons and the plantar fascia. Shortening of the tibia and fibula is sometimes observed. As it is a congenital condition, it will be present at birth. After delivery on neonatal examination, one would notice a deformity of one or both lower legs with regards to the position of the foot. As shown in the picture, the foot or feet will appear turned inwards and upwards with varying severity. If club foot is suspected, your next step should be to attempt to passively correct the deformity to the normal anatomical position of the foot. If this is possible, it is probably postural due to in utero moulding and parents can be reassured that it will correct over time. If it is not correctable, assess for true club foot. CAVE is a simple mnemonic that can be used to remember the four individual deformities which make up a club foot. C is for cavus or increased arch of the midfoot. A is for adduction of the forefoot. V is for varus of the hindfoot. And E is for equinus or increased plantar flexion of the hindfoot. Other commonly associated features include underdeveloped calf muscles and foot shortening on the affected limb. It is often an isolated problem in an otherwise healthy newborn, but can be accompanied by other deformities if a syndrome is present. This must be kept in mind. True clubfoot is a clinical diagnosis. All four deformities previously mentioned must be present and not correctable on passive movement. X-rays would only be indicated to assist with management. Although clubfoot will typically not cause the child any problems or discomfort until they start to stand or walk, it is important that all children are treated from the first week of life to encourage an optimal outcome. With the management of clubfoot, goals include improving the mechanics of the foot as to enable functional pain-free standing and walking with the sole flat on the ground. Improving the cosmetic appearance of the foot is also important for the self-esteem of the growing child. The ultimate goal is a healthy, happy, active life. We will now outline one of the more commonly used methods of management, known as the Ponsetti method. It includes two main phases of treatment. Firstly, realignment, and secondly, maintenance to prevent recurrence of the deformity. Non-surgical realignment is always first line, regardless of how severe the deformity. Gradual stretching, manipulation and repositioning of the foot, followed by a mobilization in a long leg plaster cast from thighs to toes, is repeated weekly until the deformity is largely improved. Forefoot adduction and hindfoot varus are the first to be corrected, followed by hindfoot equinus. If non-surgical management is not satisfactory, the orthopedic surgeon can perform soft tissue surgery to lengthen tendons and allow increased mobility. Maintenance therapy is required as clubfoot deformity has a natural tendency to recur. Stretching can be used to encourage tendon lengthening, but the mainstay of maintenance is braces known as boots and bar, which keep the feet in abduction and maintains the correction. The Ponsetti method has shown to be very effective, but requires good caregiver training and cooperation with orthopedics and physiotherapy to prevent recurrence. If untreated, the deformity will persist and consequences include poor self-image and difficult or awkward gait due to abnormal mechanics. As you know, this predisposes to arthritis and other manifestations of abnormal loading such as calluses. The majority of children who are treated are likely to walk relatively normally, wear normal shoes and live active lives. We hope that through this video you have learned some useful information that you can utilize to optimize the outcomes of your future patients one day. Free
created using Powtoon.